The following is a production of Salt and Light Radio in Boise, Idaho. Kick off your work boots and pull up a boulder. It's time for Man Cave. Discussing the issues that affect Catholic men in today's culture. Grab your favorite beverage, pick out a comfy spot around the campfire, and enjoy today's conversation with our two favorite cavemen, Pat King and Brian Howe. Hello, welcome to Man Cave. I'm Pat King, and my guest ho- guest speaker, you're, you're not really a host, I guess. You're a speaker. You're my friend. You're someone yeah. I know. Anyway, this is Travis right. Wingo to my right. He's got a really nice-looking pink shirt on, yeah, but you. he's got guns and parrots on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty cool-looking shirt. I hope you yeah. can you know, focus in and see... See what the, the the parrot is sitting on, or is that a parrot? That's a parrot. Yeah, it looks like a parrot to me. Anyway, oh. it's a it's a pretty cool looking shirt once you get close enough to look at it. All right. So today we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, Travis Wingo and Johnny Horn run the the Idaho Catholic Men's Conference, and right. they started it. Uh, what I think we're six co- years seven ago, or seven years, maybe seven or eight years. Okay. Yeah. So. They actually, their first year was my first year back to the Catholic Church, and so you know when you're when you're into something new, it's like you gotta you gotta dive into everything that's out there. And, and I'm glad right. it was because it was actually it was a very good conference for me to go to w- as a newbie revert. Great. Okay, I was born Catholic and I left the church for about 25, 26 years, and then I returned to the church, um, and and I needed. I needed that outreach, and and I've always said other churches do a much better job of keeping their youth. They have youth programs, they have young right. adult programs, um, they have they have other ministry because where people tend to f- leave the churches is, is right out of high school, and they leave the family nest, and then they go off to college, and right. they don't think they need the church anymore. Uh, right. They don't need a church, the church. They may find a different church. They wander off. And, right. and, 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 and parents really don't know what to do because they don't want to make their kids go because they're adults. Right. But they also don't want to, to um, disavow, disown them because right. they won't go to the church. My grandmother was great that way. She, she would always call, and, and, and wherever I was, she, she knew I wasn't a practicing Catholic, and she, she would always leave a message like, I said a rosary for you today. That's great, yeah. and and so never any pressure. But she always loved on us, and and that's the only way. If your kids weren't astray, that's the only way to really bring them back is to constantly love on them, let them know yeah. that you're praying for them, that you maybe offered a mass intention for them, right. something to continue to let them know that your Catholic faith was important enough to them to include you into that. So, right. and then you know and. Uh, I appreciate you telling your story because that is not a unique story. No, we, it's not. We hear, I, Johnny and I every year hear story after story after story of men who have left the faith or been away from the faith. Uh, well, one story in particular that really meant a lot to me when I first moved to Boise in 2007, I I met a really nice couple down the street from me. Protestant couple, great. Uh, he's a realtor, great guy. And uh, at our very first men's conference, I had kind of let him know we're doing this men's conference and and everything. But I didn't invite him, but I should have, I guess. I just didn't even <laughs> think about it. So it was incredible to be up there introducing one of the speakers. And Dave stands up in the back and's waving at me. <laughs> He came the, to the, the, the Protestant the neighbor, Protestant oh, neighbor cool. yeah. and and so then I get talking to him at the conference, and uh, I'm like, hey, how, you know, you came, whatever. He goes, you know what? I got this uh, reject Catholic neighbor who doesn't go to church or anything. I told him, hey, you're going to come to this conference with me. I know this guy that's running it, <laughs> and so here's a Protestant neighbor promoting the bringing conference. his you know his <laughs> defunct Catholic neighbor. See, the, he, other, the other defunct Catholic neighbor. Right. Not, not the, you know, yeah, he, he's bringing his, <laughs> yeah, he's his Catholic neighbor who's non practicing, not doing anything. So you're going to go with me to this Catholic men's conference. So <laughs> you, you just never know. I mean, and, and again, I, we could just have a whole podcast going on 
maybe stories. We, maybe we should do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, just this morning, I was at the the Salt and Light Catholic uh, men's breakfast. Breakfast, yes. yeah. Or conference men's business breakfast. Yeah, and it wasn't men. I think no, it was, it was any business. Business, was business correct? Breakfast. Yeah, yes. anybody can go. And two guys, two separate guys, came up to me who I I don't know very well or i might have, might have ran into him that's the one thing that at the men's conference they I, know you yeah you but don't, i don't you don't meet everybody I, it's it's hard because i'm trying yeah. to run the well, conference that's why you asked who i was again I, I <laughs> okay <laughs> Plus, I got five kids and work full time, and you know, running so, a, a separate ministry and all this other stuff. So, like when I was telling Pat, I'm like, "You got to remind me yeah. to to come." He's like, "What's wrong? You ain't that old yet." I, I said, "You're not that old to be forgetting stuff already." I, I have very little bandwidth. My bandwidth is very limited. I told him we can get him a bigger SD card. You know? <laughs> right, right. So that that's the motivator. With so Johnny did, and did I, your Protestant neighbor become a Catholic. Well, I, he... I, you know, he he's very <coughs> sympathetic towards the Catholic faith. Cool. Uh, so that was neat. You're, but that's you're getting him. You're you're working on the it. the motivator for us is definitely the stories that we hear. Not only not only is it men who have fallen away, but men who are just kind of cruising. Yeah. They're cruising. They go to mass on Sunday. They think that's all they that's all they need to do. All required yeah. of that ask, right. ask them. And they to don't do. see the need. They don't see the need to. Step They're just up. like, well, I'm going to mass. This is well, a requirement. So your mm-hmm. conference though really came at a time when I was at. I don't. I was going through a divorce. You know, mm-hmm. uh, lost my farm. Lost my. And your men's conference came at a time when I'm going. Who who else may be going through what I'm going through, or right. who else can I at least put my hand on their shoulder and say, man, brother, I need, I need some help or some guidance. Your conference came at an optimum time where I was searching for that next step of involvement Right. that I needed to not to take what. So when I was called back, I felt this huge Holy spirit calling. Right. And I, I just didn't know what to do with my energy Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I think that the Catholic Church does. Uh, and it's not the Catholic Church in general. It's just parishes, uh, right. local areas. They don't do a good enough job of of recruiting or bringing in or having activities like men's Bible study, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Because men are the backbone of the church. Sorry, ladies, I'm not trying to say that you're, you do all the work. But men need to be a big part of that because statistics say men that go to church retain their kids at a much higher level yeah, I of get, going to church. Yeah, that you you nailed it. Um, one, I, I mean, there's a, a lot of stuff to talk about today, but a instrumental help with the men's conference has been the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance, which is a national uh, group of guys, heavy hitters. I mean, these guys are serious about their faith. Uh, they've been done very well in business. They've done very well in life. And they have put on a conference for leaders in the men's ministry oh. world. Johnny and I just attended down in Tempe, Arizona a few weeks ago in a wealth of knowledge. So just like you were saying when you came back to the faith, you were kind of looking for an outlet. You wanted to get connected with I guys. I wanted to get involved, but I didn't right. know how. So it's so we love discussing the men's conference with other with other guys, but it's an it's next level. When you meet guys like Johnny and I are meeting guys like ourselves that are in Milwaukee, that are in Tampa, that are in St. Paul, uh, all over the United States. And we actually had a couple guys from South Africa came wow. that are running men's ministry there. Wow. Okay. So when you get together with those guys, then you can relate. You know, then you're like, you can let them know, hey, this is what we're struggling with. So it was incredible because they, we, it was a, it was more of a workshop conference, so they had workshops that we would go to. So they had like an they had an intermediate level. They had a beginners. So if you have no men's ministry going on, how do you get it going? How do you start? So with they it? had guys doing that. Then they had advanced workshops, which Johnny and I attended a lot of those. Fundraising. How do you get guys? How do you recruit guys? And the number one way that you get men to attend your men's conference. The, uh, or your men's group, your that man is you, whatever your Bible study, fourth day groups, Curcio, Knights of Columbus, they call it the tap. This is how you get guys to yeah, come. face to face. 
It's not the emails. Brother it's not the brother. phone calls. It's I, th- those are help. You might get maybe ten percent return on emails and phone calls. I think phone calls is a little bit more. The tap is forty to fifty percent of the men that you tap on the shoulder will come, and the more you tap them, the higher the percentage is. Yeah. So that's that's because, how we get butts in the seat. Because most men won't ask other men to do something that'll change their life. They'll say, "Hey, let's go have a beer." Right. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go golf. Correct. That's easy to do. If you're already able to do that, you tap another man that you know is might need what you have to offer. Hey, brother, let's go to a men's conference. Yeah, I wanted to read you because what you were talking about uh, getting the man. Um, I'm trying to find their. They have this really good saying that they say in there about uh, getting the man. I'll find it in a little bit. But anyways, uh, well, so it, let me. You keep looking, and yeah. I'll. Uh, so. When your first men's conference came up, I don't think I don't know what you thought or how things ticket sales were going. I immediately bought a ticket, and but what what got me was and 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 it shouldn't be just about the speaker. It should be about the whole right. effect of men getting together. Iron sharpens iron. But Larry, Father Larry Richard was the was the main speaker, Correct, yeah. and I had been listening to him. And and w- one of the things I've mentioned on my radio show. Uh, on Morning Light, as well as my podcasts and the and the, the recorded podcast we used to do for studio release, and then now this podcast, as I've said that Father Larry Richard was on was on open line one time, and was being you know he it was a regular show or I think it was a it was a Tuesday or a Thursday, and he was on every every week through EWTN and and, right. and one time someone had called up and and father had this loving jokingly but seriously you know attitude about himself he's very firm and passionate about men being men and he told the guy he was kind of whining and he said oh shut up and be a man right and it was like oh I've never heard a priest say that before right and and it was refreshing and needed because mm-hmm. I I will say you know I'll admit I I was a little bit of a whiner you know, I wanted things to go my way. I wanted God to be placating to my wills and my desires and my needs. And that's why those non-denominational other churches are kind of nice because they kind of fit the mold. They kind of mold them to fit what you want and need. The Catholic Church has a different play, set of rules. Right, and that's one thing that's been really important with us with this men's conference is we have to realize that we are ministering to men. This is this men men need, men need warriors. To, yeah, we need to instill that warrior spirit, and 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 through orthodoxy and the true teachings of the church. This is not a sugar coat. Let's hug everybody oh, and a kumbaya. kumbaya and all that. We don't do that. We are running a solid men's conference. You can get plenty of the sugar coating stuff out in the in the world. All you want, more than you could ever receive. We don't do that. If you don't challenge men, then they don't they don't find the interest in it. And so I found this this is this is our motto for the men's conference. But the CMLA actually came up with this and, and we love it. You strengthen the man, you strengthen the family. You strengthen the family, you strengthen the church. You strengthen the church, you transform the culture. So that is the vision for the men's conference here, and that that comes straight from the uh, CMLA. Well, Um, you know, that's funny because when I taught confirmation, I tried to encourage other men to teach, and it's not because men are better teachers. I don't know. I, I, right. my, my ex-wife was a, was a school teacher and she did a great job of teaching. Right. I, but, but men need to teach because it shows when they're willing to stand up in front of other boys mm-hmm. and girls, right. they show a, and, and they learn to overcome that fear of teaching and they, it shows them a, a strong strength and leadership mm-hmm. that lets them know they're capable of doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Most, I think, you know, when I, you know, I, I love, I had three daughters, Mm -hmm. you know, and, but I, but I knew that my wife's example could not show strength of, of independence and strong strength of confidence. And I can do this. I can tackle things by, by just her alone. It Mm -hmm. was the, it was the companionship of me as the strong father showing them what a man should be like, how a man should treat a woman, how a man should treat a girl. And, and 
me loving them in a in a fatherly way showed them that that they can get love from both sides and the guidance from both sides, but their strength in the man. Right, and I think it's it's really uh, profound, and I'm not sure where this comes from, but I, I've heard this quote before. One of the best things a husband can do is is show his children how much he loves his wife. Right. And this, uh, you know, we can get into all the the stuff going on in society. We, yeah, we don't we, we don't need to go we that. don't need to go down that rabbit hole. What what we're interested in is setting guys on fire. So there's a concept here. Again, this is, I just got back from the CMLA conference, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, they, they talked about getting organized. So the one of the, so we look at the men's conferences as what you call the gasoline event. That is what sets guys on fire, gets them motivated, gets them out of their funk about, you know, whatever it is. It's, this is to light that fire, the gasoline event. We're pouring gasoline the Holy Spirit is coming down. It's setting you on fire. Okay, if you attend the men's conference, awesome. That that Holy Spirit moment, that gasoline moment, may last two weeks. It might last six weeks at the most. That fire will burn out after about four to six weeks. The fire that was set is pretty much that gasoline's burnt. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is why it's vital that men meet weekly. Those are called charcoal events. Okay, you keep that charcoal sizzling. All every week, every man should be attending some sort of men's group, whether it's that man is you, whether it's a Bible study, whether it's Curcio, wh whatever it is. And if there's not one, you need to start one. If you don't have a men's group or it's not available, we don't sit around and complain. Well, they need to have more men's ministry. We they don't have anything for men. What's Stop complaining and start doing. Well, after we that very first conference, you know what I did? There wasn't one in my church. Right. And again, I'm a returning Catholic. I wasn't even mm -hmm. a year in the parish. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I started a men's conference, uh, men's group. Right. That's what that's what that's what needs to happen. So that's where guys need to. If there's not one, you start one. You need to start taking ownership of your faith, so you can start taking ownership free of your family, and. Kevin O'Brien, which we're probably going to have speak one of these years at our men's conference, he had – this is just a sidebar conversation that we were having with him. But he he was saying for years his wife always gave him a hard time for going to the men's group. They, they meet at all these different times. Some men's groups meet at 5 a.m. on a Wednesday or 6 a.m. on a Thursday or 7 p.m., whatever it is. He said he always experienced this kind of angst with his wife. Why are you going to this men's group? I need your help at home. Or, you know, there's <coughs> things that need to be done at the house. And, uh, and I also struggled with this because I ran a men's group for years at uh, St. Paul's BSU. And I always felt guilty that here my wife's been at home with the kids all day. I'm going to come home from work when she's exhausted and say, bye, I'm going to the men's group. And she's like, well, hey, wait a minute. I've been at home all day with the kids. Now you're going to go up. You're going to learn how to be a man, but I need you here at the house. So that was always the struggle. So Kevin Kevin said one, he experienced this one day. His wife was having trouble. Why are you, you know, you got to go to bed early tonight, but I need you to help me with this and this. He says, he sat down with his wife and, and said, there are things that I go through on a daily basis at work and personally that I can't really unpack with you. There most things I can, but I need men to speak to me in a way that a man can right. to help me to be a better husband, right. to be a better worker, to be a better father. I have to have men around me, like Father Larry said, man up. Yep. Or show me compassion right. because you never know when your daughter is going to have this horrible abdominal pain that needs her appendix out at 3 o'clock in the morning and you've got work. You've got you all these things. I think you that recently, didn't you? Exactly. <laughs> and who did I reach out to? Yes, my wife's there, but I need men there to surround right. myself with to lift me up and right. say, hey, what can we do? So guess what? My men's group does. They got a meal plan going. They got meals set up for my wife for, for a few days. 
Um, they, they, you know, they're, we got families coming together. Hey, can I take some of your kids for you? Right. That's what men's groups do. Right. They are doers. It's not to sit around and complain about the politics of the world and what this president did or didn't do or the economy. Oh, I mean, we can discuss those things. It's that's fun, but this. It's it's bigger than that. Well, and, and I and on my radio show oh, a couple three four weeks ago, I had this actual conversation about ladies. If you if you love your husband and you want your husband to be a better husband, a better right. father, better leader, better provider, wouldn't you rather have him going to a men's group where you know the other men from the parish or the other men are right. Catholic and you know that they're not going to take any of his BS and they're right. going to they're going to help guide him and, and lead him into that road to a stronger male image and a role model for his children and a better right. husband for his wife wouldn't you rather have that be right. the thing he goes to and chooses to go to and wants to go to and is excited about going to versus 4 or 5 hours on a golf course that may cost you a couple hundred bucks right you know yeah. this is this is where women really have to stop and I and I and I applaud women for being as supportive as you are. But really, if you if you your man is going to feel that 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 angst towards him if you don't like him going or you wonder why he's going, right. if you can support him and let him know with your whole heart that you want him to go, I'll tell you what he'll set the world on fire for you because now he feels the freedom to really dive deep into that and commit to that and be there for other men as well. And and that's why the men's conference is is vitally important. You need to reach. We we our 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 goal is always. I mean, it's nice to have the guys that are very involved, like yourself or some of the. the you know, there's a good. There's those guys are always going to come to the men's conference. I don't got to hound them. We don't have to send them a hundred emails and corner them in the parking lot to come. They're just going to come. The men that we're trying to reach is the everyday Catholic guy. Maybe he lives his faith. Maybe he reads scripture sometime. He goes to mass on Sundays. But we need to light that fire. But he's not he's doing not, anything. He's not a Knights of Columbus member. He's not a, he's not a teacher for right. the youth ministry. He's, right. he's not taking an active role in anything other than his obligation to go to church. Right. And it's not that uh, – and it's not that – that he's doing anything bad, no. but we need to infuse the Holy Spirit, but he gasoline. Has, but he has an experience in his life that could benefit another man. Exactly. Or other children exactly. or the parish. Your story is – your personal testimony is one of the most powerful evangelizing tools that you can offer a man. Because and that's why we that's why we have personal testimonies at the men's conference because you have a speaker up there. Some people might not relate to Father Don Calloway. They might not relate to uh, um, Ray Garendi or some of these other guys. They're a professional speaker. They the Catholic stuff. That's their life. But when you got an everyday Catholic guy that comes up there and he's shaking, he's shaking the paper he's trying to read off of it. Right. He's, he's nervous. He's nervous. And, everything. and he's yeah. talking in front of people. Hit he. he knows typically right. out there and they, they even mock him yeah like, oh you sissy girl you know yeah whatever but th that's that's where the rubber meets the road that's right because you can say like this is just a regular guy he 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 works at a meat packing facility but he had this gasoline event set him on fire right okay because you can ask you know or you can it doesn't necessarily. There's some guys that you just don't have time. You have to get deep such. Into their, into you their you life. have to figure out those ways. You you have to figure out those ways where you can live your faith, and it takes time. I I to give an example, when I first got married, uh, my time in the car, I just wanted to listen to music and relax. <laughs> but my wife is constantly wanting to pray the rosary. She wants to do this novena and that novena. It drove oh, me nuts. Oh, how dare she? <laughs> it drove me nuts. I don't want to pray in the car. I this is my time to zone out, kind of listen to music, relax, have a good time. And now guess what? Our kids get in the car, boom, it's rosary time. We're praying our rosary all the time. This took years right. for me to do this. Well, and I bet you, and I know that when I got married, if I was a practicing Catholic and was doing and there was a men's group or men's conference where there were other men that are married lo longer mm -hmm. that I could have confided in. I'll right. bet you I wouldn't have made all the stupid mistakes. I would have made some, right. but I probably would have 
I probably would have either caught myself or had someone that said, no, you don't want to do that. That's yeah. that stupid, you know, because yeah. I made a lot of mistakes in my married mm-hmm. life. And, and if, and, and I, but I was never a part of any men's group at that point. Right. And, and I really, cause my father wasn't in the picture growing up. Mm-hmm. My mom was the only man in my life. I mean, right. she played father and mother. Right. So, there was there was a lot of lack of knowledge on my part, and I know that I'm a Knight of Columbus, and I know that there are brother knights out there that I can confide in, and 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 you may not tell them the whole story, but they'll tell you a response that you're on. Oh, maybe I shouldn't think that way. You know. Right, right. And that and um. So as far as speakers go, we are. Uh, we get a lot of requests from the guys out there. You should have so and so or this guy or that guy, uh, in. It, and, and I've talked about this many times, and I talk about it at the men's conference, but Johnny and I work really well together. Uh, Johnny is a very contemplative uh, faith life. He's very prayerful about things. He's always taking things to prayer. And I am the knock on every single door until the one opens. Okay, that's how I do. So I'm knocking on doors, knocking on doors. Johnny's praying. Not that I don't pray, but he's much more... Uh, you know, contemplative. Let, he let wants the to, Lord guide us. Yeah, like and, let's pray about it. So I'm I'm breaking down doors, and Johnny's praying, uh, and and it all works together. It all works because if we were both contemplative, we might not get anything done. Well, and, and if you, we were both running around crazy, we wouldn't have that spiritual component as much. Well, and you so, know, it works <laughs> because you've you've had successful men's conferences even during COVID. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's and, and one. One of the many things that's important to me is we had a really tough conversation. We had some seriously tough conversations the last few years about there was some talk about going straight virtual. And I really struggled with that because I can watch podcasts. I can can watch this show and it's good. It's fruitful. But there's nothing like being in a room. There's no connection. I mean, yeah, there's nothing like being in a room with a thousand guys praying the rosary, laughing, on their knees. On, you got Jesus there. It's so, the, so it's uh, it's overwhelming at times. So you got to picture this though. They they usually get rooms that'll fit an X amount of people because that's the way they can budget it. Right. And then they sell out and 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 not every man is as skinny as this guy. They're <laughs> probably twice the size like me. And so they sardine sandwich all these chairs in to where you can barely squeeze by. And every man is in their chair row, kneeling on the ground, right. praying. No one's no one's sitting. Well, there's maybe some some people that are sitting because of their age or their knees. Yeah. But the majority of eight, 900, 1,000 men are on their knees praying the rosary. Yeah, so we uh, this year we have Father Chris Alar coming. Uh, he, you can see him on EWTN. He's all over the radio. He's in the same order, I believe, as Father Don Calloway. Dynamic speaker. He's excellent. We are currently working on Father Shea, or uh, I sh- Monsignor Shea, who wrote the book from Christendom to the Apostolic Age. I'm, some, I'm probably messing that up. But anyways, Monsignor Shea is uh, very well liked by our bishop. Uh, our bishop read that book and uh, passed it out to the, our fellow priests here in the diocese. Very big supporter of him. Uh, and one of the common themes that we're seeing here is everyone thinks we're living in this Christendom age. Right. Which we are not. We are not. Wake up, people. This is a Christendom. Secular, it's a is secular not, age. We are in the apostolic age. The apostles went out spreading the word of Christ, knowing they will be martyred. We are there. Maybe you won't be burned alive at the stake. Or, or hung on a cross upside down. Yeah, not yet. But no. we are in an apostolic age. We People are not churched anymore. Well, and, and the churches across the United, especially Catholic churches, it, right. it's, it's the highest number of church attacks or persecution of individuals, right. priests, uh, holy religious uh, fem- uh, uh, nuns, sisters. Oh, yeah. They're being... Pregnancy killed, centers, pregnancy centers all yeah. across the United States. We are States. under attack. This is the apostolic age. So, what better speaker to have than Monsignor Shea, who wrote a book about it? So, he's uh, somebody we're working on. We also will have our testimonies. Some of the things that guys were, um, we get this every year is we need some more time to hang out. It, and it's so. Do we have a location? It's going to be at St. Paul's in Nampa okay. again. 
uh, same. It's it's always the weekend before the Super Bowl. Uh, we and there's a reason for it, guys. <laughs> there's no football on on. There's nothing. There's nothing. It's a dead week in it's sports. Week. So unless, unless you, you watch have the, no uh, excuse, right? Unless you want to watch the championships of uh, cornhole or something. No, they're not even golf. <laughs> yeah. There's no racing. Yeah, there's there's nothing. nothing. Right. So right. you have no excuse not to come. But yeah. you're also offering it again virtually for. Yeah. So there, there we will have w- another avenue we're working on we've been developing this even before covid is watch parties so if you are interested if you're in Coeur d'Alene or grangeville or that kind of thing and it's too difficult to make it to the men's conference which we to would one day 100 percent prefer you to be at the exactly. conference because your life will matter to someone else's exactly and and there like i said there's nothing like having those guys all together but we realize there's men that have work obligations and they have other things going travel on. travel expenses are going to be high or yeah. handicap problems yeah. or things like that gas prices um but we are offering um a the ability to have a watch party so either hosted by your parish or and where your local priest now this is we're going to require work on your part not we don't do complaining this is going to require you to take the reins and spearhead the watch party at your parish or at your home or wherever we had uh, i think one year they rented out an old theater or a, a conference center wow and they had guys come and they did their own food we'll have a whole setup of how to do this so but you're going to have to put in some groundwork. Do you have a theme for this year's men's conference? Working on it. That's okay. Johnny's spiritual side ah, of things. Okay. He's 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 a, So, a, if someone wanted to do a watch party, could they order the shirts enough in time to where they would have them for yeah, the watch party? Right. So, one of the one of the things that we deal with a little bit is too is well, how do we capture these guys because somebody could host a watch party and then they have 30 guys that show up that didn't that didn't uh, pay for it. And we realize that there is some of that, but you know we'd prefer to capture those guys so that we can see how well we're doing, how how well are we reaching. Well, we'd guys. like to get to know. We'd like to get them to register, so we have a way to have a communication because then you send you 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 will document the whole thing and then send it out to where they can watch it again, right? Uh, uh, get all the speakers and all some of the reactions and Correct. even some of the aftermath. Yeah, uh, it, it gives them access to the conference videos. Uh, they will. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're doing this year. If they're going to get shirts again or not, we we're still working on that part. But what what even better than that is it gives them it gives us access to their email to get them connected to the charcoal right. events. So if you don't register and you just show up, which is I'm just glad people are getting the content. But we want to get you connected into these men's groups or starting. So do you have group. a do you have a, an outlet for list of men's groups in your area that? So we're, hey, this is what's going on in your area. So tie into that yeah so if there's not you need to contact either us or go on to the catholic men's leadership alliance and there's tons of free resources on there to get men's groups going that don't cost a thing so if you're interested in starting a men's group go on to the cmla website and you can see a lot of free programs that they have free content that you can use for series to meet with guys and they give you some outlines of how to do things but so Travis here, you can tell he's on fire for this. We could actually spend another half hour or more right. talking about this subject. Right. Because, again, I will admit that I, I it's not an admission. It's a, it's a fact that it, I needed that at the time that I came back mm-hmm. to the church to keep me moving forward into the path that I've taken to where now I have my own radio show, my own podcast, right. and, and I have a men's ministry that goes beyond mm-hmm. just I just returned to the church. Right. And I would never have done it if I hadn't made it to that first. That men's conference hadn't been available, and it hadn't been there for me at the time that I needed it. Right. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Right. So that, I mean, that's a legacy. Just so you know, that's a legacy that you can hang your hat on. That you've accomplished something like that. That that it's gone beyond just that first conference. And now you're you're averaging what about eight nine hundred men a, a year? Yeah. So this year we're we're li- we're on track to sell out. So if you're interested uh, or being moved by the Spirit, which you are, to come to the men's conference, you're going to need to sign up as early as possible because this year we're going to be – we're on track to sell out. So we're capping it at 1,000 men. So if you want to attend in person, 
you need to register as soon as we release the dates, which is usually November-ish uh, is when we start releasing the tickets. So I highly encourage you to sign up quickly. So this year it's February. You mentioned it was uh, February 4th? 4th, I think. Yeah. I'd have Check our website. and when Just the, to make it easy, emails. guys, it's between the end of the playoffs and before the Super Bowl. Correct. And so that's and, the easiest way to find. And sons are allowed to come. Yep, that's up to your discretion. What's the age? What's the age, age well, we, we it's not a hard limit, but we set a soft limit at about twelve because some of our speakers do get into heavier topics at times. They don't get super graphic or anything. But again, this is not a women's conference. It's, it's a men. Nothing men's wrong with women. Iron sharpening iron. This men's is conference. men, and they need to be spoken to like men. So they're right. But there's always a group of guys, uh, a young adults or uh, young kids even, and they all kind of hang out and they're punching each other and goofing off. But we love it because they can see their dads there. Bring your grandfather. Bring your dad. Bring your brother. Bring your coworker. These are the guys that need it, not the guy that goes to church every Sunday and is involved with men's ministry and all this stuff. It's too bad he has no fire in his belly. You know, so. <laughs> so let, Travis, yeah. we're going to end this. Yeah. We'll say the St. Michael's Prayer, but I'm Pat King for Man Cave. This has been my ho- uh, co-host, uh, guest, uh, uh, Travis Wingo, and it's right. w- W-I-N-G-O, Wingo, just like uh, Ringo, but Wingo, Wingo right. star. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are going to talk about next. We're going to have him on for another episode. We're going to talk about family nights, so hopefully he can dial it in and, and really right. be a little bit more personable this time. You know, right. get, get, get a little more to it. Yes, sir. All right, thanks, and and have a good sh- – uh, thanks for joining us this time. St. Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be, be our protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Man Cave, a weekly podcast discussing the issues that affect Catholic men in today's culture. A production of Salt and Light Radio in Boise, Idaho. To learn more about our ministry, please visit our website, saltandlightradio.com.